We spoke with celebrity stylist Amanda Sanders about the wardrobe essentials men need to build the foundation of their closet so your morning routine can be a bit easier. Amanda has styled celebrities including Chris Rock, Jeff Goldblum, Dave Chappelle, and Colin Quinn. So usually when my male clients come to me, they don't really have a wish list. I, I always ask my clients, what would you like to see in your closet? And the men don't really know what should be in their closet. They just have an idea that what's in their closet is crappy and they need to step it up, whether it's for a woman or a job or a change in their life. And they just realize that they need to start afresh and they don't know where to begin. So the first thing we're going to be trying on is a white dress shirt. AJ is going to be trying it on and it's going to be the foundation of all of our other outfits that I showed you today. So a white shirt can be worn a number of ways. It could be worn tucked in with a suit and it could be worn untucked with the sleeves kind of rolled up, hanging outside with a pair of jeans. And the most important thing is that the shoulder actually fits on the shoulder, as opposed to a lot of gentlemen buy their shirts a little too roomy and they're sloppier on the shoulder and there's more volume here. So you really wanna have that great white shirt that can sort of be worn either way, wedding, funeral, court, or casually. So a man should always have a great pair of dark trim jeans. This is essential. I prefer dark because dark will always wash out to be a little lighter. It also tends to look dressier and cleaner. And the most important thing that I think men miss is fit. Jeans need to be tight because they stretch out. So even though you're uncomfortable maybe trying them on, smaller is always better. So AJ's wearing a pair of dark J-brand jeans, which happen to be my favorite because they have a lot of stretch in them. And they're not so dark that they look like dress pants. They're distinguishably jeans because you can see the denim color. A cool, lightweight bomber that's sort of water resistant can go over everything from a t-shirt to a nice dress shirt and is a little more fun for going out at night. So this is a great example of a bomber jacket. It's got a little bit of nice detail on the collar and on the wrist so that it breaks up the heaviness of it. A bomber is usually something that zips up the front and doesn't have a lot of detail in particular. This happens to be water resistant and if you can see there's a little bit of a green black cool camo pattern to it which I love as well. So the next great item I'm gonna show you is a great blazer. I happen to really love this one because it's not as heavy as the navy jacket that would go with your suit. It has a little texture and dimension. That's why you know it's a blazer versus a suit jacket. Throw a blazer over AJ to show you that it can be worn in many versatile ways great nice thing about this blazer is it's unlined, meaning that it, it doesn't have a lot of bulk to it. And this is considered something that's more of a casual blazer. It has a soft shoulder, so there's not really padding in it. So it just looks sort of easy and clean. What's also cool about this is it's got patched pockets, which are very different from suit pockets because these you actually can put things in. A gentleman should always have a non-athletic sneaker to wear with cool jeans. Sometimes you can even wear it with a suit in the right way. I'm not talking about a gym sneaker, and there's a large difference with multicolors and just the wideness versus the narrowness of an everyday sneaker versus something that you would wear that's dressier. So these are the two shoes I happen to really like that are considered 
sneakers. They're a much dressier version. You would never wear them to the gym. This happens to be a Santoni, which has a cool double monk strap and a white sole, which makes it a little bit sportier. It's also ombre blue, so it goes from dark to a little bit lighter to distinguish it. So I love this Varvados sneaker slide. What makes it more casual is just by the look itself. It is a slip-on, so it's cool with jeans or shorts and no socks or low-profile socks. It does come with laces, but that's part of the charm of something like this is that it doesn't, you don't wear it with laces. When a man is choosing a suit, there's a lot of things to look for. Usually navy is more versatile than gray, and black is a no-no in terms of buying a suit. Black is typically worn, a black suit, for weddings and funerals. Navy gives you much more versatility in the business space, and it can also be worn, unfortunately, for a wedding or a funeral. <laughs> I happen to love Ted Baker, English designer, Often the jackets and the pants are sold as separates, which is really nice. So this suit works really well for AJ because he's what you would call an athletic cut. So he's broader on the shoulders, which most men are, and trimmer through the waistline. So this suit happens to just skim the body and not hug or stand away from the body, which I always think is the difference between you wearing the clothes and the clothes wearing you. What also I like about this jacket in particular is it has a notched lapel and the lapels are in medium width as opposed to something really narrow that is in trend now but may not be next year. So the most important thing when putting on a suit is making sure that it fits in the shoulders. That's a very hard and expensive adjustment. You want it really right on the shoulder line. If it goes too far over, it's gonna make you look too broad. Um, and if you go too far under, you're just not gonna have any movement. What you also wanna be aware of when buying a suit is that although it looks great in the front, when he turns to the side, there's quite a lot of volume here. So that's always something that you wanna work with a professional tailor to making the suit fit you. So every man should have a great dress shoe in their closet because it's gonna tie an outfit together. You want something that is smart enough to wear with a suit and then cool enough to wear with the dark pair of jeans. This is by Santoni and it's a dark brown but sort of ombre in the sense that the tip is a little bit darker. It has a double monk strap and a rubber sole that makes it a little more comfortable and walkable. It's kind of your go-to classic that will live in your closet for a long time. This is my version of a more casual dress shoe. It's just more casual because it's a loafer as opposed to a monk strap. It's a little traditional, but it's a little more refined at the tip, which I happen to think elongates a look rather than something that's really round. So when we're talking about brown versus black, a brown shoe is actually much more versatile than black. Brown always goes with navy and gray, khaki, goes with denim. It really gives you a lot more options than a black shoe. A black shoe typically goes only with a black pant, a navy pant, or a denim. But brown gives you the versatility of anything. You should always have some fun, great accessories that really complete the look. I always feel like they're the finishing touches. I prefer a pocket square versus a tie to add a little color, to add a little pop. Another accessory, which might be the most valuable thing you invest in, is a good watch. When it comes to having another great accessory for the summer, it should definitely be a pair of sunglasses, maybe even two. I would say something that's sportier and something that's dressier. Plastic frames tend to be sportier, and then a dressier look is something that's an aviator. So now we've come to the end of our seven great essential pieces. Now that you have the basics, you can start to add more things to your wardrobe. An additional shirt, maybe a shirt with pattern, maybe a lighter color pants. 
You could just keep going from the knowledge you now have.